Well, good morning, everyone, and my apologies for the glitch this morning with our uh, changes in Zoom settings and the extension of this. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, my apologies for the glitch this morning with our morning meeting uh, with Zoom's new settings and uh, my desire to extend this morning meeting out till uh, Friday, May 1st. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. So uh, we're back um, and I will get a new uh, link out for everyone in our community uh, later today. So uh, good morning, happy Monday. Wow, it's a beautiful day outside. I hope that at some point today you can get away from your screen and get out into the sun, uh, practicing social distance and all the uh, other appropriate measures, of course, as we make our way through COVID-19. So you received an email from me if you're a student Saturday morning, outlining our new policies and procedures for our Zoom meetings. Please remember that these virtual classes on the Zoom platform are only for Fenwick students, right? And only for students enrolled in those particular classes. And that we expect the same behavior from our scholars online as we do in person. And you know that. For so many in our school who have uh, studied the Rwandan genocide, today is a critical day. Today, April 6th, uh, was the day back in 1994 when the genocide began with the assassination of the Rwandan president, Juvenal Habio Rimina. And his plane was shot down by surface to air missiles. So we remember Father Marcel, who came to speak to us, and so many, so many uh, who perished in that genocide. We use as our opening prayer this morning the second reading from yesterday's Palm Sunday Mass from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we hold in prayer all those close to us, our family members and friends, classmates and colleagues. We remember especially this day, all those we have been asked to pray for. For Vinny, the cousin one of, our, of one of our faculty members who died recently. And for his wife, Ginny and their children. For Bob Devola, who was on a ventilator fighting for his life today. For the health and safety of an alum, nurse Emma Harrington, class of 2017, and for her roommate, who was also a nurse. For one of our applicants who lost his grandfather to the coronavirus last week, and for all who are affected by COVID-19. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In Christ-like humility and obedience, may we have the courage to do God's will this day. We ask this each in his and her own way, and I would ask it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, so I'm here in one of our new learning spaces looking out on Margin Street. It really is a, it's a gorgeous sky, and uh, it looks to be a really nice warm weather day. Um, we're highlighting student artwork, and so on my left, um, these uh, scratch board drawings from uh, Ali Nicastro, Grace Reardon, and Jordan O'Meara, beautiful. Well, maybe you can zoom in, I don't know, at home, uh, see if you can get a close look at them. So we're celebrating student art this week and into next week as well. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> it's not easy from what I heard on Saturday from some of our seniors and a few alums, the stresses and pressures of our homes are well intense and increasing. So three quick thoughts on <clears throat> on all this, and I, and I hope they help. The first two come from watching 60 Minutes last night. Did anybody else watch 60 Minutes last night? The first story was on the devastating, wide-reaching, and far-ranging effect that COVID-19 is having on the restaurant business 
and on the wider hospitality industry as a whole. The focus was on individuals and families in New York City, uh, but it's happening everywhere. Thousands, tens of thousands being laid off, losing jobs, filing for unemployment, struggling to pay bills and to feed kids. Heartbreaking. I want you to know that we at Fenwick are doing our part by highlighting on social media the small businesses of our Fenwick families and alumni. You may have seen us stowaway suites in Marblehead, Treadwells in Peabody, Goodnight Fatty in Salem, Cakes for Occasions in Danvers, and Chocolate Truffle in Reading. All of these have connections to Bishop Fenwick. If you and your family can support these businesses, please do so. And if your family owns a business, or you know of other Fenwick-related small businesses, please send a note to Mrs. Vigneron or to me so that we can share your story. The second piece of 60 Minutes was about interviewing Holocaust survivors, but doing so in such a way using artificial intelligence and hologram technology that the heroic survivors could actually be interviewed by students even after those survivors had died. You can watch it online, so I won't get into all the details. What struck me most about these survivors is that they chose, even in the darkest moments of human history, even with the unimaginable, unspeakable loss of their siblings, parents, and loved ones, to go on. This was a defining moment for them, to be sure, yet they did not allow the moment to define them. They chose to have courage and compassion. They chose to be those who endured and persevered. They chose a will to live and a desire to love. They chose healing and hope. Perhaps these are the kinds of witnesses you know, we need even today. Finally, you know, I mentioned earlier that the stresses and pressures we're experiencing are significant. Indeed, these are very real. The anxiety that overtakes us, the uncertainty that overwhelms us, these are real today. Most of us aren't exactly sleeping well. All of us have our moments. Even as adults who know that this too shall pass and that eventually a better and brighter tomorrow will come, even we can feel deeply troubled. So let's not beat ourselves up for that. Let's not get down on ourselves thinking that somehow we shouldn't let this get to us or we shouldn't let it affect us so much. This kind of thinking creates even more stress for it adds an unrealistic and unhealthy pressure, the pressure to be perfectly in control when we can. We have enough stress without trying to believe we should be able to handle all of this smoothly and effortlessly. So please, go easy with yourself. And remember that you're not alone. Keep sending those droplets of joy and keep following us on social media. And keep choosing hope. Blessings on your day. Take care.